the great man theory. Maybe he does change when he takes off his, his, his armor. So he's definitely maybe protecting his head from from arrows. Swords. You know, he had, maybe has chain mesh to stop from um, being pierced by spears or swords. The headdress looks really you're right. Spanish, very Spanish. Uh, the helmet. I wonder what that's on top of it. That looks almost like uh, feathers. What is that exactly? I don't know what that is. Um, he looks like a, a knight. Could be a knight. Could be a king. I remember Haile Selassie I would wear a helmet like that. It's very noble. So you have some good points on that. Definitely, you know, inspirational. If you buy, buy into the great man theory that, you know, that's how history is shaped by the uh, warrior or the great man, whether he is a he's explicitly a warrior or you know just a soldier. Definitely, we all could be that. We all could aspire to be a great, great person. I think of like I'm thinking Napoleon. I'm thinking possibly, um, you know. Definitely Selassie. It reminds me of Selassie. Knights. Knighting. Yeah. They're all influenced by that. And I really don't think that when you think of a knight, you think of a culture. But people associate different, different, um, I guess, warring classes with the knights. Royalty and in so many ways is associated with the knight, but it's like whether they're for the Spanish crown or the English crown, you know, or, you know, some other form of royalty. Ethiopian. The Ethiopian crown. Honestly, they all have a, you know, a coat of arms maybe, but we don't see his coat of arms. You know, what would his... His uh his signi insignia, the the mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like it's definitely maybe his particular group. I don't know if I would call it a clan or you know an order because maybe he has he has definitely been um. Well, yeah, he has the breastplate. Definitely has the, the breastplate. He has the helmet, the headdress. He's not, he, his sword is not in his hand. He they're they're not sword. showing us. Maybe he maybe he a has his sword or, in his hand or, or, or the early uh, Spanish um, guns at the time. Right. Which, you know, they just fire the the muck, musket buckshot. That's right. And it's really like s spray and pray. Like you just blast in, the s s in that area. Maybe you hit it. Maybe you don't. Little uh, uh, marbles, marble-sized bullet pellets. And that... That, um, really hurt, actually. The gunpowder aspect was basically uh, it was perfected by the Chinese, actually. Oh, Even fireworks, yeah. fireworks being weaponized, happened. I can't remember when, but you know, definitely we can imagine somewhere in history, like it was maybe fun to look at, but because the Magi, they knew the magic. Whether it could take life or it could put life back together. Well, it was it was psyching out the enemy. Right. It was it was all mental warfare at first. With the sound and the bang, the it's sound, like a flash the bang. bang. The flash. They're they're, Ooh. they're 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 disoriented. It scares. They're, they're, it, they're terrified. Where is that? They're terrified. It's they're, magic. Yeah. So they work. Oh, worship this. They lost before they even fought. Before the, fought like the, chemistry was enemy. being used. The the chemistry, the understanding of Kemet. That's right. You see, like some of them, but the knowledge that people rec recognize in the history books are oral, are orally translated too, because some people spend a lot of time like studying schools and going to classes, and because they don't know oral history and oral training, you know, it'll be like, well, my country says that we made the gun, you know, propaganda definitely.
But knowing that he's working for like a royalty or the king sends him to go speak with the suppliers, maybe he's going on a journey to to figure out uh, this magic powder. What this? Who has the source of the magic powder? My king sends me. He offers so much gold in exchange for the supply of you might want to ask your pastor, magic powder. You might want to ask your pastor where he he uh, he acquired this cannon. It's it's a marvelous cannon. Very very nice strokes. It's a uh, it's it's definitely from a time period um, in the eighteen maybe even fifteen sixteen hundreds. Fifteen sixteen hundreds. Fifteen. That's my that's my uh, professional. Professional uh, advice or assessment. My professional assessment as being a connoisseur of fine art is definitely, uh, you know, the, the borderline, the uh, canvas, it, it's just marvelous. Definitely worth a lot of money. If it was, you know, authentically. Uh, all, all art is worth definitely worth something. It's in between priceless and worthless. Definitely. And you have it in your room. That is so awesome. You got it in your room. And it has like, you know, the trimmings. Can't just see the edges. The perks of life, huh? Well, it's a blessing to be surrounded by beauty, but also through inspiration. I mean, <clears throat> maybe power isn't considered something that we consider beautiful but definitely when we are saying when we can admire someone in strength the admiration is there so that that respect and the confidence of his face is definitely there because you know that this is someone who doesn't BS like you could say gets things done his painting just says like his, his face to me says I get things done. Like, it almost looks like uh, Russell you can Crow trust if I say in, something. In if I say something, I meant it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you say like, if I had to, if I had to put my life on it, you, you know what I'm saying? This is someone like I said it in my my. That's my word. Like, my life is is my word, and most definitely someone who's like responsible because. He has the confidence, the seriousness. Yeah, he has a uh, honor. There's a word that people use in the military. It's uh, honor. Uh, my grandfather, he was a paratrooper for the, uh, the U.S. Army, and he always talked to me about honor. So this painting definitely has an honorable man uh, being uh, photographed at the time with their technology, which was the, uh, the stroke of the wrist of the artist. Very beautiful. You know, that's still the basis of everything. It's the wrist, it's the artist's eye, you know, the piece. These oil paintings that people buy, whether they're abstract or they're concrete or they're, you know, cubist, you know, uh, modern or postmodern, they're still, you know, expensive. Is is they're, yeah. still, they're still you know going for a lot. They're, yeah, they're appreciated. You know, so it's like this inspires me to be like my next piece. Maybe I try to aspire to that caliber. Where I'm you thinking, could be there. I mean, how really? do I? You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I wouldn't say, I say it unless it was real. Unless it was true, you could be the, at this caliber. Your artwork is just 